Hey guys, kind of a surprise video, um, in a bad way. The head gasket blew on the gray car, and the white car is not good for dailying in the winter, so I need to tackle this. I know I said I was going to do turbo stuff, I do apologize, but keep watching and you'll see how I do the head gasket on here. All right, you guys, now just as a last video, this is not a how-to. Um, I'm in kind of a predicament, so I need to replace this quickly. I'm not gonna have the head machined. I know I'm gonna get a lot. Well, I'm gonna get hosed for that, but uh, I'm not gonna have the head machined, and I'm also not gonna replace the head bolts. I just went and I grabbed a head gasket from Advance Auto, and I know my intake gasket's gonna leak if I pull it off, so I grabbed a new intake manifold gasket. These are just Cheap brands. Um, I'm hoping for the best, obviously. I'm hoping that this repair does work successfully. If it doesn't, I'm hoping that it'll at least tide me over to the spring so I can uh, have the head machine and everything. However, um, there are some people that have had a lot of luck doing it this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. First, I'm gonna do the basic things, like I'm gonna take this box out Take this brace off, unplug the battery, and then take this wheel off for when we have to turn the motor to get it to top dead center. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and drain the coolant from the radiator first, and then from the block. The radiator's done draining. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, break this. I can't really see it. This bolt right here loose to drain the coolant out of the front of the block. And while that's draining, I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna take this hose off of the intake. I'm gonna mark the distributor right here and then take out the three bolts holding the distributor on. And then uh, we're gonna come over here and take this power steering pump off. Now that I got the distributor off and the uh, engine block drained, this intake off and the power steering pump off, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this stuff right here from the head. And then after that, I'm going to unbolt the intake and unbolt the exhaust manifold from the head. Just something I wanted to point out. I've had this leak for a long time. I fixed it on my other car. Never fixed it on this one, because I guess I didn't think about exactly where it was coming from, but now I can obviously see. So you got all this oil here, and it's running down the back of the motor, dripping on everything. And it's coming out right where the distributor is. Well, you got this little O-ring right here on your distributor. Right there. And it's only a couple bucks from Honda. So if you have this leak, it only takes about I don't know, 15 minutes of your time to mark the top of the distributor, pull it off, and just swap out that O-ring on there. And it's a really easy fix for this oil leak, but now I got this crazy mess. I'll probably clean it once I get the, actually, yeah, probably once I get the head off. But anyway, now that all that stuff's off, now I'm gonna take these bolts off and kind of pull the, uh, <clears throat> the header off there. And then I'll come back here and I have the same uh, well, a similar type of bolt pattern here on the intake manifold, and I'm going to take those off. And I'm going to pull the intake manifold back. And then the head should be free, we can start taking the head apart. All right, my tripod broke for real this time um, when I was adjusting it to move it, so 
There's gonna be no more time lapse for the rest of this video, but what I'm going to work on now is pulling the bolts off along here and taking this intake off. The intake's off. It was really, really hard, but it's off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the valve cover off and take the spark plugs out and slip the timing belt off. I fixed my tripod and now I can take off the bolts that hold the cams in. You don't even feel it. It sucks. I'm like one speck below heated seats and power mirrors. I'm salty. Yeah. I'm trying to get all these big chunks, like get behind this. Thing. I'm trying to get. Hey, don't worry about me getting video. I'm just trying to get something. All right, so we got the head cleaned up under here, and we have the block cleaned and the head gasket on here right now, and we're gonna go ahead and, and put the head on. It's about time. Alright, so we got all the rocker arms in and the cam caps on right here. I'm going to go ahead and put the timing belt back on and get the valve cover on here. Um, we might adjust these valves, but we did put the rocker arms back where they came from, so technically I guess we don't have to since it was running fine. Probably good to do, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop this timing belt back on. Got the timing belt back on. It's in time. Can't do any more time lapse because my phone's full, but we'll just update you guys. Periodically. In it's in time. We actually ended up calling it quits last night because I would just put this timing cover on and realized I still had to, actually I had almost everything back together on the head and then realized I forgot to do the cam seals and forgot to put the timing covers back on. So if you look over here at these cam seals, they're really nasty. So I'm going to pop those out and replace them. Um, on this side, we had leaks as well. So there are four places your head can leak from right here, here, here and here and mine was leaking from all four so I got a new cap with a new o-ring right here that's in there right now and then this side I got a new o-ring for the distributor so that won't leak and then I got two new cam seals for this side so I'm gonna go ahead and put those on and I'm gonna bolt um, everything on the head back together like the valve cover and put the spark plugs in and then we'll go from there so the valve covers on the spark plugs are in everything's done up on the timing belt side and then uh, the intake manifold is also bolted to here. Now the intake manifold on these cars is extremely hard to remove 
and extremely hard to bolt up. So I'm gonna give you guys some tips in case you're doing this in the future. So I've never done this before, so I didn't know any good ways of doing it, but I did figure out the best way to do it. So the bolts on the top, you're gonna want like a ratcheting wrench to get to them. You don't have to take the fuel rail off, like some people say. Just uh, a ratcheting wrench will get the bolts on the top. That is no problem. The bolts on the bottom, however, there's one underneath each one of these runners. There's four of them right there. And then there's also one right here on the end that's pretty easy to get to, one on the end over there that's easy to get to. The ones that are under these runners are really hard to get to. However, what you wanna do is you wanna get extensions that are long enough to have a ratchet back here behind it ratcheting and the socket up here. You need some wobble sockets or um, wobble extensions on there to make it so you can kind of go down underneath this. And that's what you're gonna wanna do to get them on and off. Now when you're putting them on, specifically on these ones over here, um, if you drop a nut, you're not getting it out. It goes down behind this coolant pipe. Even with a magnet, you can't usually get to them. So I lost, I think, three so far. I had to buy some more. But the best way to handle that is to put some RTV in your socket and then put the nut in the socket so that you don't have to worry about holding the nut in the socket with your finger. Um, the RTV will hold it in just fine and then you can reach back here and thread it on that way. And then uh, once I did that, I didn't have any problems at all. So you got these three runners, or yeah, down here, these three that you need to reach from this side and then this last runner right here. I'll come over here and show you. This one right here, you reach from right underneath here um, if you have any problems, you can kind of, you can undo this hose if you need to, or just bring this clip back here, which is what I did, that moved the clip out of the way a little bit. And uh, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. If you've never done this before, you might find it pretty hard, but once you've done it once, it's not too bad. And I guess I should have specified what I'm going to do next. I am going to put this exhaust manifold on. The exhaust manifold's bolted back up. Now we're just going to come over here, put the AC pulley and belt back on and the power steering stuff back together. Just button this whole side up. Okay, we got this side of the motor bolted up. Now really the only thing left to do is to put the hoses back here, plug this stuff in over there and then uh, pop the distributor on and uh, plug in the spark plug wires and put the air box back in and I'm going to go ahead and do all of that really quick. All right, we got it all back together. First start went okay. You can see some smoke coming off there from uh, burning the coolant off the exhaust. It uh, had a crank for a really, really long time. It idled perfectly fine after it got started. It, it, it died right away, but uh, it idled fine after that. Only thing I'm thinking is uh, there was a little bit of ticking going on up here towards the top, so the valves probably do need to be adjusted. I did not adjust those, and I may have mixed up some of the rocker arms. So I think I'm definitely going to do that probably maybe tomorrow. It'll probably run fine without doing it for a little while, but um, I'm going to do that soon. So I need to adjust the valves and fix the O-rings on the injectors. Other than that, this thing's uh, good to go. And that is where I'm going to end this video. Head gasket replacement was a success. My hands are nasty. And uh, anyway, get subscribed if you like the video. And... Uh, like the video as well, that helps out big time, and uh, stay tuned for the next set of videos. Peace out.